guts. What a funny little character you are. You are. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very <laughs> special edition of Bonfire Lit. I suppose we're about like, to get lit. Yeah, we're about to talk about the first episode of Berserk, the Branded Swordsman. It's pretty branded, dude. Uh, with me today, we have Pokey as Pokey. Uh, for a little backstory, I suppose Pokey and I are the big Berserk fans of Bonfire Lit, so I felt it necessary for us to be the ones to talk about it. Yes, we come from opposite ends of the spectrum when uh, <laughs> discussing Berserk, but here's the thing, though. Oddly enough, somehow neither of us are hyper-apologists, because no. uh, it's, it's, it's good to not just be happily accepting of everything, just because... Oh, you want to sit back and enjoy something, huh, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's been a lot of negativity on the channel lately. <laughs> I love discussing Berserk in our Discord because it's, it is it is the definition of unsolicited opinions of Israel. <laughs> <laughs> unsolicited opinions of Berserk. <laughs> uh, like, it was fantastic. We had... Will had to... Had had to had a shot web. We had fucking uh, Kevin Kevin obviously uh, Snorlax. That man's a monster. You me uh, fucking he, 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 was it Mike? Was he the one that called me Shadow the Edgehog for not liking this episode? I don't know who, but Mike will call you an Edge Lord <laughs> no matter what. So oh oh damn. Well, Edge Lord Edge Lord is awarded to uh, Platinum Conquest for saying that episode one <laughs> is unacceptable. <laughs> I, I will say, you need low standards to really <laughs> embrace and, and find yourself in love with episode one. Okay, that's fair. Like, you know, Kotaku forms of low standards. <laughs> so I suppose, like, we should talk about the element, the, the sorry, the elephant in the room. The animation. So. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll start off with the CG. Might as well get it out of the way, but we, we're not going to go light on it because it needs to be spoken about. Yeah. Now, so, tell okay. me what you thought. Right. Okay, so... Thought. I'm of the mindset, and like a lot of people are like hating me for this, but... Mm. Upon seeing that this is 24 episodes long, and I understand why there's CG in the series... Yeah. Like, it's not a stylistic choice <laughs> all the time. Mm. Some of the CG shots look look okay. So, like, we, we said about this when we were watching the episode, we were saying Puck being entirely CG for the most part. Because he's already out of place in the Berserk universe. Yeah, like, I, I appreciated him more when he was 2D, but being 3D, 3D never really bothered me because... Like, I'm more of the mindset, like, I really wish you weren't here at all. So, <laughs> uh, but no, in, in all honesty, yeah, I do agree, though. Their puck in 3D does Is not it? stand out obtrusively so. Yeah. Not as much as Guts walking, <sighs> that's for certain. So, we should probably talk about it, so. Okay, I'll, I'll, pr I'll finish off what I mean, though. Um... It's well, not the word. You're, not... you're bringing up good shots. Like the end, at the very, very end, when he's walking away from the camera. Yeah. Not too bad. There are good CGI shots, and there are <laughs> there are more bad ones. Oh, but certainly. to say all the CGI was bad is a bit exaggerated, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> like rabbits and clangs. <laughs> Tell my <laughs> wife that I <laughs> that I clang. <laughs> All right. So, Pokey, tell me about what you think about the CG, because I've been waiting to hear this for a week. <laughs> All right, the CG in this... I, I, I have to keep on reminding myself that it's an episode, it's a show. I keep on... Like, I'm always on the verge of saying the word game. <laughs> because it does look... It, it frequently looks like a CGI cutscene. A really poor one. Like... Uh, a low-budget animated CGI cutscene where I've seen better animations in The Prince of Persia Sands of Time. You know? Yeah. I I've seen, like, I've seen better cell shading on, uh... In, in Guilty Gear Excerpt. I've seen better cell shading in The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. 
Well, that's yeah. what confuses me because, like, yeah. through the entirety of the development of the show, I've been sending you screenshots, and I was like, "Look, like, yeah, the, like the screenshot a week before it came out, I was like, "Look, Pokey, this doesn't look that much different than Guilty Gear Excerpt," and that's why, yeah, like I was getting excited. I was like, "Okay, I can't wait for like to be proved wrong," but then mm-hmm. I wasn't. <laughs> That that was a that was a huge problem too because like here's the thing like I was never a fan of it going to BCG to begin with but I can eventually look past that if if this show has enough production value to really ensnare me which this doesn't not yet not yet and a big well, part of the issue here is that like when you compare the old CG style of when the when the show was first put into production and then now like okay i don't like either but i can fully admit i like the original form of the cg production than i do with what we wound up with it's well, very very odd yeah that, well we, we can say that like i don't know if this is true or not but like you know obviously they had a movie's budget for the golden age arc movies yeah but in saying that like we don't know if this is a more advanced form of cg because it definitely looks like it's a bit more advanced at the same time as not as advanced like it could be more advanced but it's just not in the right people's hands that's yeah that could always be a potentiality there but like to say that the production value entirely is bad is a bit harsh because like like i've said for every bad cg shot we have a equally good like 2d shot yeah in the show and like we've had like Ugh, it's hard for me to talk about. Like, I, I really want this to to like this. It's the first episode. I'm going to be talking about it as the series goes on. Mm. New episode every Friday, which is surprising. You know, if it continues to go on, I hope that they can find a consistency a consistency in the CG art style because, like, they have they have this weird floatiness. To yeah. all the characters, like Guts stands out the most because he's the one in CG the most. Yeah. So when he's moving around, he's sort of like, it's almost as if his feet aren't necessarily a part of touching the ground. He's not like a part of the earth when he's moving. I'll agree and, with you on that. Yeah, and and you remember in the beginning, when um Homegirl is on her horse and then her and her horse slide into shot, they sort of like it's like they're wheeled in, like the horse is on a cart of wheels and they and they just sort of brought it into shot and they're like. You know, it looks good. Like something like that can work in two D animation, but in three D, it stands out like a sore, sore thumb. Yeah. And I think like one of the worst, one of the worst offenders is every time when we go back and we and we look at the uh, this fucking skeletons that pop up, man. They're so bad. Like towards the end of the episode when they show all the bones broken, and I I couldn't help but point this out every single time I saw it was. <laughs> They look like they're 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 cell shading on on the broken skulls. Looks like they they came straight out of Klonoa Two on the PS Two. Great game, by the way, gorgeous video game. But when, when you're talking about a a 2016 production for Berserk or 2015 2016 uh, current year, when you're talking about a current year uh, production on Berserk, yeah. it's really it does not look good. Like it, it looks like two different types of cell shading styles have just been like sort of fused somewhere oh and then the trees the trees look like they came out of a completely different video game that was the weirdest most bizarre thing yeah it feels like there's a lot of outsourcing happening at the moment and i know for a fact that there is outsourcing happening because yeah the popular image at the moment is you know the oh studio that's worked on berserk and then it's like all the slice of life (laughs) stuff and then berserk (laughs) and magical slice of life stuff yeah which isn't necessarily true (laughs) Because mm. there there is outsourcing, it's confirmed. Yeah. Like I'm guessing, like their ha- like Lucid is doing like the majority of it, and then for certain scenes, just to like take the burden off them, they're handing. And, um. and here we're, we're winding up with a Street Fighter Five situation where some of the character models look quality, and then yeah. a bunch of them don't. Yeah, like wow. we've got like we've got th- opening bald-headed thug who the, for the entirety of the episode just looks trash. He's so fucking bad. He's like, so bad. Yeah. But, then, but like, little kid, um, little boy kid, and uh, and Puck, they're not the worst things in 3D. No. Well, there was effort put into them, I, and rightfully so, because they're main characters. Yeah. But like, at the same time, like, it is the first episode... This is a lot of people. This is going to be an introduction for a lot of people to the Berserk series. Mm. 
So you need to make a good first impression. Uh, like maybe I don't know what what, what the like the season by season anime fan opinion of, of the first episode of Berserk is. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's gonna be tough to say. I mean. It, it, so how did you how did you feel about the pacing of the episode? It's a mix of good and bad because time passes by really fast when watching oh, it's this a episode. Very, it's a very quick twenty minutes. Yeah, it, it like it feels like no time passes at all. But the problem is that because the pacing is so weird, by the end of it, I'm like, that's it. Because they only showed so much of what was going on in that situation, and they never made me feel like I had to give a shit about anything, especially Colette. Which oh, by the way, speaking of speaking of graphics, fucking. Colette and her weird eye, that weird lazy eye in that one shot. You know what that reminds me of? If anyone knows this comic, there, there's there's a comic uh, based on one of the animated cutscenes from Tales of Symphonia with there's a character named Colette and she's looking down at Lloyd when they're like camping out at, at, at night on like a grassy area and she's staring down at him and her eye slowly drifts off to the side and Lloyd's like, Colette, Colette, What's wrong with you? <laughs> like it's 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 awesome. Anyway, that's what that reminded me of because this character's yeah. name is Colette and her eyes going fucking spazzy. The pacing though, I gave no fucks about Adolf or Colette. I gave no fucks about Puck, gave no fucks about Little Boy, gave no fucks about Clang Rabbit, I gave no fucks about really, really anything that happened here. Like But I, in saying that, like, they handle they give you a complete idea of who guts is and like that's mm. the most yes. important thing <laughs> i can i can agree to that entirely they really do a good job of putting you in work or they, they do a good job at exposing the mindset that he's in yeah i, I can like, agree to that entirely but like the other problems that they have is like they don't give enough weight to parts that need weight yeah like um girl coming out and stabbing guts that's a lot more drawn out in the manga, mm. like the manga, like makes that like look, look what this these creatures do to people, you know. Yeah, I, I guess I should um, I guess I should uh give a little bit my you know my history with this particular uh, arc. I have none with it. I have no history with this arc. I have history with the Golden Age arc, and then nothing after that. And I do want to get into them. I want to read them and stuff. But going into here. This is my, my first time being exposed to truly what Puck is and this whole Colette situation. I, I have no fucks to give. In fact, I'm, all, I'm, I'm kind of even annoyed at a, couple, at a couple elements. And I'm sure when I read it, I'm sure it's going to be a better experience. Yeah. Like, I have no doubt 100%. in my mind. Yeah, because like, like things like, like um, the little fucking... Oh, what's his name? The little kid from uh, the Band of the Golden Hawk. Or the Band of the Hawk. I have no idea. I forget his name. He's not important anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's... <laughs> Like Rickard or something like that. Um, yeah. I can't. Yeah, like in the anime, which by the way, I love the '97 anime. I think he's annoying do. as fuck. Yeah, yeah, we we both love it. I think he's annoying as fuck, but I don't think like he doesn't ruin the show for me at all. Uh, he doesn't even ruin the story for me. But I like from what I've read of the mango, I enjoyed him way more because I didn't have to have a stupid voice in my head. And, you know, <laughs> I, I was able to make it up for myself. <laughs> so it's, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be interesting when this gets translated. Yeah, uh, well, because uh, Pokey and I, uh, uh, this may be a form of heresy, but we both, by far, prefer the English dub. Yeah, it's not frequent, but there are a select number of anime out there that I feel is better in English. Cowboy Bebop and... Space Dandy. Yes, yeah, Space Dandy, definitely. And Berserk, among them. Because, like, the ongoing joke that I do for everybody is, you know, it... Great <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of that, hey oh. Sam, how do, how do you how do you feel that um that whitewash Casca's rape scene gets relegated to a, a second and a half in the introduction? <laughs> well, you see, Pokey, it's current year, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we brought Trudeau on the show. <laughs> yeah, it's. I don't know how to feel about that just yet. Like, it's mm. episode one. Maybe they'll like. Maybe that's not the last we're going to hear or see of it. Yeah. Maybe they're oh, gonna have. Oh, speaking like, of that though, that you know something important about that, about the introduction and and a couple of the scenes, the two D animation in this in the show, the few times it pops up, when fantastic. it's not rushed, 
it looks fucking gorgeous. Yeah, fantastic. Like, yeah, the scenes that are hand drawn have a lot of care in them. Like, if you show me a bad CG scene, I could show you an equally good two D one. We kept pointing this out as we watched the episode. Yeah, in fact, I was frequently saying like, "Oh, look, the two D. Oh, and then it disappears. It goes away <laughs> after like a like two seconds. Sometimes three seconds at last. It, it sucks because it's like they are gorgeous. They are fucking gorgeous, and then." They just vanish, and then there's that 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 one quality, you know, quote unquote quality, uh, 2D spot where guts <laughs> has the weird goofy nose and his his head's all misshapen in the intro. <laughs> I love that shit. Oh, it's good. Yeah, you just trust the people to go. Well, trust. I say like the people who are judging every frame, but I'm the person who went through the intro just to see if there was any of those. There's, yeah. There's a bunch. Speaking speaking of uh, frame combing. Uh, there's um, a funny thing about the CG in uh, one of the one of the portions where a, a character has symmetrical hair, like a, a clump of her hair in the front is completely symmetrical, and the reason why I find that to be a problem is because you're working with a 3D model, and if you're working with a 3D model, that means hey, you could just build the model right away, make it look good, and then then you do the camera work afterwards. That's why it strikes me as so bizarre that they only worked on half of her bangs. <laughs> and then duplicated it, and then just fused it together, it's, like it's anchored very, it on top of her head. It's very clear that they are cutting corners for yeah. the moment. I want to emphasize for the moment. Yeah, definitely for the moment. It's I can understand why people find this as a bad first impression because I would agree. I mean, this is my first impression to the conviction arc, right? That's what this is. Yeah, conviction and, arc. Like I said, I'm absolutely certain that a when I read a, it, it's. A bit of a controversial opinion I have is uh, that a lot of a lot of people are angry about. They are yeah. skipping arcs, but I'm gonna say it right now. Um, post Golden Age arc doesn't have the best pacing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I am. I am in love with the Golden Age arc, and I, I can see what you mean. You know, you and Platinum, among a couple other people, speak about how you know post Golden Age, like it becomes more of an appreciation for the art. And, and, like, the cool moments, but less for, like, the overall quality of the story. Because, you know, there's just, there sort of seems to be a, a larger emphasis on, like, the craziness rather than, you know, yeah, uh, building a cohesive, character-driven experience. Uh, and, and I guess that makes sense, because at that point, it's really just, it, it's guts and friends fights, the, you know, fight the apocalypse, <laughs> I suppose, or something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Mr. Gatsu, Mr. Gatsu's wild ride. <laughs> Come, children, let me show you the sea god, so I may cut him in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was another thing, though, because when we were talking about pacing earlier, uh, when we were speaking about this a while ago, one of the things that I really felt that I, that I felt could have benefited this episode... Because they already did such a poor job at, you know, trying to sell the whole Colette scene, I feel like a lot of this episode could have been condensed into the first... <coughs> Goddamn, that's the seltzer water coming back up. A lot of this episode could have been condensed into, like, maybe ten minutes of the episode, and then we could have moved past that, because I just... It felt like it felt like we got nowhere, other than to understand Guts, Guts' mind. But you can also do that over the course of more than just, you know, the, the one the one event. So I, I, I felt pretty let down by that, especially because, again, a lot of these supposedly really important scenes that I really want to bite into, they don't give me the substantial, uh, I don't know, beef for yeah, said things. Like, uh, well, I'll, I'll give an example, for example's sake. Uh, the tree, you know, lifting up guts and, you know, the, the corpse that he has now killed, like, you know, the person he has now killed, mm. and he turns to her, and, you know, he sees her corpse about to be eaten, <laughs> and then he's like, you know, fuck this shit, and he yeah. decides to, you know, and he decides to, like, lash out and, like, fight in a situation where he would otherwise be doomed. Mm, yeah. And that's supposed to be a, a big character moment for Guts, because that's showing, you know, oh, he has a heart. You know, this this thing did affect him. Yeah. And then the, the scene afterwards, after he kills the tree, you know, you're supposed to be like, see, Guts is a good guy, and then he goes, no, they're fucking dead. Ha 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 ha. It is pretty funny, though. They're pretty dead. They're pr maybe, like, you know, Guts is, Guts is the guy of, uh, 
he's he's very sun. <laughs> it's sundere. <laughs> I, I I need to get that that guts puss. So it's soon. <laughs> no. All right. Now I, I suppose we should move on to the soundtrack and sound design. Yeah. So let's talk about the soundtrack first, because I have very little to say about it, but it's positive. So, what do you got to say? Right. So, Berserk. No one, like. No one can say Berserk has ever had a bad soundtrack because it never has. Mm. The people, the the people who have conducted the music for Berserk, have always been very dedicated. <laughs> They've always done a very good job. Like even on the 1997 anime, it still has so many good tracks. Oh, it's got one of the best anime soundtracks I've heard like ever. I love yeah, it. Yeah, like it rivals, <clears throat> rivals Evangelion, even maybe better than Evangelion. I can agree to that, because they have Susumu Hirasawa, and the dude's yeah. a fucking genius. For for those who don't know, Susumu Hirasawa, he actually doesn't work on that many anime, but he comes mm. back for every single rendition of Berserk. And if you are curious as to who he is, does that name sound familiar? Um, Paprika, Paranoia Agent, you know, ah, weird fucking, like, you know, <laughs> Tibetan bullshit kind of, it's re- really weird, crazy, like... I don't know, he's, sort of... He's known uh, for very grand and epic music. Yeah. Good and shit. And the fact uh, that he solely works on Berserk is... Uh, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Hirasawa is pretty fucking awesome. So, so uh, yeah. he's done a few... Mu- he's obviously done a few remixes for this Berserk. You have hmm. the, the new rendition of Blood and Guts that plays during Guts' Nightmare with added vocals, like, you know, added eerie vocals and guitar... Yeah. Which give the song, like, a lot more weight. And that's actually a super good song, and that is from the Golden Age arc yeah. movies, that song. Yeah, and I then, still have to watch... I have to watch the movies. I have yet to watch them, by the way. And then you've got the outro song that plays, you know, during after the final scene, you know, explaining the events of the next episode. I'm not quite sure what the name of it is. I don't have it on hand right now. Mm. But, you know, it's got your usual berserk vocals and then your grand, your grand, you know, orchestral pieces. Boo, do, 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 do. Yeah, I, like, the only thing I wished for was, like, there was more Susumu, like, directly, like, his direct tracks within the episode itself. But then again, I will say, it would yep. not have made sense for this episode in particular. So, no. I feel like they made the right choice musically. For- like, later on... It will make sense yeah. for them to have a lot more. Blood and Guts was the perfect choice for Guts' mm. Nightmare. Like, that... I'm sure when we get to a Casca um, at the waterfall, there will yeah. be a sensible, like, Susumu track there. Yeah. During, like, there's going to be some big events that are going to happen later on, and I'm going to assume that they're going to give them the respect they deserve. The non Susumu tracks, I'm assuming, are non Susumu. Don't quote me on this. You know, Guts pulling out his, uh, pulling out his sword to go clang some skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we should we should go right into the sound design. Yeah. Okay. So, I want Pokey to talk about the sound design first because I feel like he can talk about it. I feel like they made a lot of positive uh, sound design choices. Um, when he's firing the uh, the the bolts out of his arm, they sound great. Yeah. Um, when his feet are twisting in the dirt, it sounds great. When his cloak is swerving, it sounds great. The wheels of the cart sound great. <clears throat> um, the atmosphere and, in the bar sounded great as well. Yeah, they they, they had um they were using some uh, sound walla walla in the yeah. bar that sounded like the very just a, it sounded very bar like you know nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Uh, the the um the throwing knives getting stuck into the uh the the post in the wall when they were trying when they were teasing puck to death um sounded great but the the interesting the most interesting thing that sticks out okay. is is go. the dragon slayer yeah i like the sound of the dragon slayer yeah but i do feel that they lacked restraint with it it's a because, very uh, criticism to make mm, yeah because like it's you know the one thing that stands out to me is the, the, the lack of the ability to hold back on the bass and treble when it's swinging. Yeah. To the point where I actually thought my spe- I thought my, my speakers were broken. I thought, like, something was wrong with them because... <laughs> am it, it I, am like... I watching a Mr. Sam video right now? <laughs> 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 yeah, it was... I, 
the, the popping, the cracking, the uh, like you know, like there's pockets of noise missing because it, the uh, the audio of the 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 Dragon Slayer peaks so high. Yeah. And now that's that's just the one problem I have. But I also felt like when it was hitting bones and it sounded like pots and pans, I was perfectly fine with it. Yeah. Um, because I'm pots and pans it. is like one of the big you know clang pots and pans is like the big thing right now to talk about it. Yeah. Um, but I had a problem when it hit the girl. And he cuts her in half. And then the clang. <laughs> it, cl- it sounds like he knocked over a pile of pots with a giant pan. <laughs> it didn't sound like something cutting through flesh and nicking bone for a split second. It sounded like she was made out of kitchenware and he broke the kitchenware. And uh, the reason why I have a problem with that is because, fast forward, the tree is happening and when he slams the dragon slayer into the tree, <clears throat> and this was something I just noticed when we were watching it just a half an hour ago, when he hits the the tree with the sword with with the dragon slayer, you hear both the dragon slayer pots and pans, and you also hear the tree bark splitting and splintering and and like you know uh, parting and shit like that. Like it sounds like wood breaking. So that's what boggles me the most about him hitting flesh is that it wasn't doing that at all. Like it was. <laughs> Uh, that was just goofy to me. Well, well, what we can say is the fact that they are including like these kind of sound effects for Dragon Slayer, there is attention yes, being put into these scenes, like like because for a lot of the for a lot of the uh, the Berserk um, sort of like the I would say you know the way they make it, Dragon Slayer has had no sounds. Dragon Slayer yeah. has just been like a regular sword. They're trying to like put an emphasis on this 400 pound of rod of iron. Because <laughs> that's what it is. Slab, good sir. Clang, my friend. Clang, I'm going to clang your rabbit so hard. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, that clang. But overall, like, it is an episode that takes multiple watches. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people watched it once and they sort of like judged it based on their first, like entirely on their first impressions, which is never fair. And like, not many anime have a very good first episode. Yeah, not everything's Evangelion. Yeah, no, few and far between have a good first episode. Yeah. But like, it, there are concerns. I'm not saying, I'm not apologizing for each and everything that happens in the episode. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, I th- I feel like people are judging it a little more harshly than most, uh, which is fair because it's Berserk. Yeah. Yeah, but, there's, I mean, the fan base is rabid for this, this particular piece of content, you know? Yeah. A lot of people have a lot of emotion invested into this. And I, I feel like such an apologist for saying, like, I would like to remind people Berserk is not popular in Japan. It's mm. not. I have friends who can attest to this, who have been to Japan, and said there's like, fuck all berserk stuff. Yeah. And rightfully so, because it doesn't, it's a western inspired, like, man- it's a western inspired manga with a lot of ugly characters, and that's not yeah. what the Japanese like. You know, they, they like the pretty yeah. girls, and they're femboys, you know? I love the boy pussy. So... That's <laughs> I feel like the studio that has it has they're taking steps in the right direction. Don't I do, they 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 obviously seem conflicted. Yeah. Something we pointed out a while ago. Yeah, they, there must be in-house disputes on the direction of the show. It seems yeah. like some people are a lot more passionate about it in the studio than others. <laughs> it does seem that way. <laughs> yeah, cuz like those 2D guys are killing it. They really are. It's fucking gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, speaking of that, I mean, just one more thing to talk about in terms of visuals. The uh, I feel like the the cross hat shading and the line shading really fails to deliver that that same experience that they're trying to um, emulate in 3D. Although I feel like a lot of the 2D shots where they do it, it looks perfectly fine. Yeah, it's it's definitely the shading is a stylistic choice, and I feel like it isn't a good one. Yeah, like it's not accidental. That they're, they're, they're purposely introducing a shading. Also, yeah. 2D, 2D, uh, I mean, 3D guts, it's far too strong. 
Yeah, yeah. He, he is, his head is tall and lanky. Whereas, especially if you compare this to the previous form of the, of the, uh, the 3D artwork that we saw back when this was being first announced, he had sort of that more built face. Like, you can see the muscle in his jaw and cheeks like, and stuff like that. You need to emphasize how much bigger Guts is compared to every character in this show. Yeah. Apart from, like, one or two characters, like Pippin, but, I mean, he's, he's not in mm. the show anymore, so... <laughs> Certainly he's, he might be part of a pile of blood right now. <laughs> he's in a lake somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I th there's there's a lot of artistic choices that they put into this episode that I have that I cannot really fully endorse personally. You know, shading and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, actually, at the end of the episode, you'll notice that when the camera is revolving around guts and he's hearing all the voices in his head as he's walking through the forest, um, if just keep your eyes on the line shading. It's a texture that's in the background with, like, a translucent fucking uh, veil over it. So the shading moving around his face is persistently the same lines, which is really jarring. It, it does not look good. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of uh, anything like that in particular. And I think, that I already mention the fact that the skulls look like fucking, like, they're out of Klonoa? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Klonoa 2. Good game. Go play that. So all in all, Pokey, will you be tuning in on Friday for the second episode. Yeah, I want to see this get better. Yeah, I do too. It's going to get better. A lot of people are pessimistic, and we on Bonfire Lit are becoming notorious for pessimism, apparently. Uh, the only one that's having trouble with it is Ian. Ian? <laughs> well, yeah. I've heard Ian and Switchback and a few other people in the Discord, <laughs> but <laughs> the Discord is not representative of the Bonfire <laughs> because they don't watch our shit. <laughs> That's true. That's actually very true. Oh, I hate our Discord so much. Yeah. Oh, I hate you guys. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck every one of you. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, we will definitely be tuning in, and we will be hopefully making episodes explaining what we think where we can for each and every episode as it comes out. We'll certainly yeah. try our best. I mean, I think, honestly, at this point... I don't know if doing this weekly would be the best option because this is like there's a lot of episodes we got going on here. It's 24. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe what would be the best idea would be to wait for every episode to come out, which, yes, I, I understand that means 24 weeks, but wait for all of them to come out and then finally judge them <clears throat> based on like after the first impression and then like how it evolved over time. Well, I suppose we can gauge by audience reaction of this episode. I suppose we should be asking the yeah. people who are listening to this right now. Like so, there's leave, ideas thrown leave, out there. Suggest leave, things. Yeah, leave a comment based on what you want. Do you want weekly if, installments? If, <laughs> like if you want to see more episodes like this, leave a like. Smash Don't forget to like visit button. my Patreon at uh, uh, Pokey Loves Klonoa. <laughs> dot. Make uh, Klonoa great again. <laughs> vote Trump. Uh, and. That guy with the glasses. <laughs> gov slash Patreon <laughs> slash that boy in peril of Pokey. <laughs> All right. So that has been it from Pokey and I. This has been your Bonfire Berserk cast. I love you. I um I I just I just don't feel like we should be exclusive yet. <laughs> you. You want to see other people? Bye!